Good morning, everybody. We have the Heatmaster G4000 here. And I know a lot of you are excited about some of the new features. Um, some of you guys have ordered these or are looking at ordering them. Uh, so I just want to take a quick look around and look at some of the differences on, uh, on this versus uh, some of their older key series models. I think they really stepped up in a lot of different areas and done a lot of nice things. The door frame here, it's all very close and all insulated. It's extremely thick, much thicker than the old series was. This is about six plus inches here, as well as an insulated door here. And we have weather stripping around to seal it to the skin of the boiler, as well as the silicone gasket here which mates to the door frame for sealing it. So that's pretty nice. Then we've got a new firebox here, full refractory bottom in it, and a stainless nozzle instead of a refractory nozzle, which should help a lot with uh, the refractory getting eaten up over time and needing to be replaced. I had a nozzle plate made out of three quarter inch steel on a G200 and uh, my nozzle, refractory nozzle itself didn't actually end up wearing anymore after I put that plate on it. So I think that this stainless plate is going to be great and shouldn't ever need to be replaced or at least for a very long time. Air curtains here on the sides, easily removable with the clips here. These clips come right out. Uh, they just slide out and then the panel comes out uh, for easy easy cleaning if you ever have to get behind there. You shouldn't have to do any cleaning behind there, but maybe once at the end of the season. The uh, air channel's gone from the front here. We don't have one anymore. The air box is gone. Uh, all the air enters from the rear now, so that's nice. We don't have a, a box and a fan damper motor out here. Uh, the box is pretty big. It, uh, it works out to be about nine cubic feet, a little short of that, but uh, it is uh, it pretty, pretty big. It's bigger than uh, the G100 was for sure. And uh, I think they test these with only about 60 pounds of uh, wood in them, uh, which is definitely not the capacity of a eight and a half cubic foot firebox. You should be able to get uh, somewhere in the 80 pound range, I believe. So I uh, should be able to, to get more in this if you really need to. Same thing down here, uh, sealed door, very, very thick. I put this bolt on here so that my kids don't open it up, play around with it. So we'll take that off. A nice feature they got a hole in the top and the bottom handle so you can put a lock on it if uh you're afraid of people coming around see here we got a very thick door again last plate of refractory some sort of insulating material there and then down here we have the refractory nozzle plug comes out there all the flue gases will come down through the nozzle, head to the back, wrap around, come back to the front here, and then head across, and then back to the heat exchange tubes. Uh, leads to a lot of heat hitting those flue gases, which could burn them up efficiently, as you guys saw in the 89.5% efficiency rating from the EPA, which was at the top of the class. The top has a single hole now for the fill level and for lifting. So there's a lifting eye I'll show you in the back of the boiler and uh, that would be pinned in through this hole as a pin and uh, when you're done lifting or moving it you take that out and then you drop in your level gauge. So that's pretty nice. There's only one, one hole. We got a blue pipe here, double wall stainless Selkirk. 
Uh, comes with a plastic top, which is pretty nice. I used to put a black bucket over here, uh, but that's pretty nice. You put that on top. You don't have to worry about the water getting in there in the summertime. And then uh, I added this myself, just a uh, fryer gauge for uh, frying food. Goes up to 550 degrees and it's got a six inch probe on it. And just drilled a hole just larger than the probe itself in the pipe. And this inserts. Should see somewhere around the 300 degree range uh, for food temps coming out of this. It just helps you uh, understand how the boiler is running and uh, if there would be any issues or anything like that. Another nice thing is you can now take the roof off if you had to for some reason uh, and you don't have to take the pipe off, which is real nice for people who are installing these inside. That, that would have been a pain to remove you know, however many feet of flue pipe out through the top of your, your roof just so that you could pull this off if it's in your garage. Come over here, got the control panel. They moved that to the back now. It's got a nice magnetic closure on it, holds it shut. Uh, you got your logo controller here, a fan breaker, a cold start override. If uh, the, the temp's below the preset, 120, 130, 140, wherever you set it, your on button. This will display all of your information, your temperature, uh, when you're running, it's going to display your O2, how, where your dampers are, all that kind of information. We have our shaker handles here for racking the turbulators. Uh, keep your heat exchangers clean. And this is your bypass handle here. And then that locks. And what that's doing is it is opening up your bypass, which is in the top of the boiler, right up there. So for loading, that will kick the fan on and pull the flue gases right out of here. It works really nice. You don't get any smoke on you. Moving back around to the back. This door easily comes off if you install it inside and it's tight in the back. There's the two handles here. Take these, lift it right up and off. Uh, there's just one push washer here that you'd remove and then the whole door can lift up and come off if you don't have the room to swing. The back here, we're all spray foam now. So it's two inches of close cell spray foam, I believe it's two. Uh, looks pretty, pretty thick. That should really hold the heat in. And they've continued to still insulate the cabinet here with one inch of EPS hardboard insulation. Sides are insulated with that hardboard as well. And then the top has a real thin layer of close cell on the top of the cabinet. But what's really going to hold that heat in is going to be this two something inches of closed cell here. For me, I've got a garage. I've got a line set here for the garage, which I don't have the garage insulated, so we don't have that hooked up yet. And this set is to the house. I have these, this is log strip pipe. Uh, and then what we have is we have, let's take this off, we have one inch truck heater hose here. It works really slick. All you do is you get a one inch barb fitting to male iron pipe. And uh, then you can easily connect your rubber hose right with a, uh, a clamp. Very similar idea to what the factory does here on the shunt pump, which comes factory. And uh, this is just a rubber hose as well. Real slick, easy to hook up and uh, allows some movement in the winter time of the ground. I got some pipe insulation on some of the small areas, you know, every little bit counts. Uh, you do want to bleed off a little bit of heat in this cabinet just to keep things, uh, keep things a little bit warm. What I did down here was brought my conduit in right here, and then I used Liquitite 
which is this flexible electrical conduit. Slide it up and slide it around. You can tuck it right under here, real nice, right up around here. And then I added a box here. Uh, the reason I did that was because my ethernet cable is also running the conduit. And uh, so it comes out of the box and then uh, gets plugged into the ethernet connection here for the logo so that you can check it while you're uh, away from home or at home uh, on your phone or computer. And then we've got this BX cable here from the box into, into there. Uh, <clears throat> these will be for the garage eventually. I just put a plug on each one in case this valve was to ever leak, which they won't, but it uh, gives you some peace of mind if somebody comes and knocks this by accident, doesn't dump all your water out. So that's a nice easy way to plug it up, but still have control of this and be able to add in your piping later uh, without a problem. Heat exchangers up here. Uh, you got your O2 sensor here. Uh, if it ever was an issue, it easily unplugs right from behind here with a junction connector. And then you would simply just spin this right out. Uh, and uh, then we got our fan motor here and no fresh air intake because it's cool enough in the back here of the cabinet. And they have these cutouts here to keep that shaft cool as well. Got our damper motors here, primary air, secondary air down here. Uh, down here you got your drain port. I put on a garden hose adapter here just so if you ever want to drain it or anything like that you can easily put on your garden hose. Uh, this is where you want to take your water sample from too. You open it up, let it run clear for a couple seconds and then take your sample that you're going to send in once a year. This is the hook for the top. If you're going to move it, very simple. It would drop in, you throw your pin through and uh, you should be moving it. These are real nice. These come from the factory, what they do is they go around the pipe to seal it up. So you drop it on one side, drop it on the other, and then you pin it down with a self tapper right through the bottom, seals it up nice. So for me, running a G200 before, the holes from the factory didn't line up with where my pipes were in my pad. So what I ended up doing, uh, was actually taking some Fernco rubber couplings here, which fit perfectly onto the four inch logster. Uh, stretch that over, and then I have up on top here the four inch PVC. This one I split in half so that I could drop the Fernco down, put the PVC around, slide it up to the bottom of the boiler, and then tighten my Fernco down so it makes a nice. Um, tight seal here. Did the same thing over here, but brought this four inch up a little bit more and uh, makes a nice, nice tight seal. I cut these with a uh, five inch hole saw is, uh, is what I used uh, for this one. For this one, I just cut it with a whizzer wheel. But really like these, these are nice, really seal, seal up the bottom where it comes in. And uh, you can easily adjust if your uh, old boiler was at a different height uh, you can easily slip a fern co over and then put a PVC pipe on there and bring it right up into the back. Have nothing exposed outside and looks clean. So I think uh, I think this year will be be good. I think we're gonna increase a little bit of efficiency. I was burning somewhere around seven cores before with a G200, and uh, I think I could be right around six with the increased efficiency of this new boiler which will be nice to cut a little bit of wood use down and uh, run run a little bit more efficiently. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, I was able to figure out how to address the logo controller so that we could uh, view the, uh, the controller itself from outside of my local network, which is nice. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Uh, just got to set your gateway on the logo controller to what your uh, router is set to for an IP address. And, uh, and you got to do a little port forwarding rules and uh, then use your global address to uh, access it from outside of the, the network. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, reach out.
but uh, it should be a good year, and uh, we'll see how it runs. Thanks.